allow me uh, to invite ambassador his excellency ambassador didier chaso to open uh, this tribute Honorable guest, guest of honor, Otman Masoud Otman, first vice president of Zanzibar. Honorable Nassau Ahmed Mazoui, minister of health of Zanzibar, founder of the Malim Safe Foundation. Dear Mama Awena, Ismail Jusa, acting CEO, Malim Safe Foundation. Distinguished representatives of the authorities present, distinguished political leaders present, distinguished guests from abroad, Dear colleagues, partners, and friends, ladies and gentlemen, Abariza Subui, Assalamu alaikum. It is a pleasure and an honor for me to attend, to attend this second Malim Saif Sharif Ahmad annual conference here today with you all. Last year already, I had the privilege of attending and offering a few remarks at the inaugural conference. I want therefore to start by thanking the organizers, Ismail Yousa and the whole team behind the Malim Safe Foundation for inviting me back and affording me the honor of speaking to this distinguished audience once more. It does speak to the character and legacy of Malim Safe Sharif Ahmad that we are able to organize such important conferences in his name with such a distinguished audience to discuss such a broad range of themes from peace and reconciliation to education and innovation. Ladies and gentlemen, I know that most, if not all of you here, are much better placed to speak at length on the legacy of Malim Saif, given how closely you worked with him. Me? I met him only a few times after I first arrived in Tanzania about two years ago in September 2020. The last of such occasions was during the second Zanzibar Peace Conference called Sustainable Peace for Sustainable Development in January 2021, which he attended together with His Excellency President Hussein Ali Mwini and other eminent dignitaries in a remarkable and strong display of unity and willingness to work together to address the urgent development needs in Zanzibar. And this is what I mostly know and remember from him. Indeed, every time I saw him or listened to him, it seems Malim Saif always advocated for peaceful resolution of disagreements and tensions. He knew, of course, that without peace, it is the people who suffer, regardless of where they come from or which party they belong to. Malim Saif understood the great responsibility that all political leaders must bear, and he carried it with utmost dignity. But as we know, Malim Saif's influence went even beyond that. And while he is gone in body, his words and his works are still available to us, covering a wide spectrum of political, social, and economic issues. As he put it himself, in a tweet on December 2019, and I quote, my vision is to put Zanzibar in its right place in the world. The main trade and financial services hub on the Indian Ocean, the top in terms of quality and edu of education, and a place of great cultural diversity, end of quote. There is a lot to unpack here, but given the theme of this year's conference, I would like to focus, obviously, on education. Dear participants, the theme of this conference is well chosen indeed. It is highly relevant for pursuing the vision of Malim Saif. It is highly relevant for an inclusive, sustainable development of any society, and it builds on Malim Saif's own work. As we know, after the January 1964 revolution, which saw many civil servants leaving the islands, 
Malim Saif was asked by the new government to join the teaching profession to fill the vacuum. Thereupon, he took up this responsibility and taught for eight years. Later on, he became Zanzibar's Minister of Education, a position he served from 1977 to 1980. With this background strongly rooted in the educational sector, it was certainly no surprise that as Zanzibar presidential candidate, he would later make sure that the party manifesto included a strong focus on education and employment creation for youth. So, very appropriate indeed that education be our main theme today. The title of the conference is Education and Skills Development, Innovation and Empowerment. It so happens that these are also priorities of Switzerland's cooperation in Tanzania. Allow me therefore, thank you, <laughs> allow me therefore to briefly comment on these three topics. First, education and skills development. When we talk about good and efficient governance in the area of education and skills development, then indeed the role of the government is key, as is the role of the private sector. In Tanzania, the support provided by Switzerland in the education sector is mainly focusing on vocational skills development. Based on the Swiss expertise on vocational skills development and dual education, we are convinced that an inclusive approach education is an indispensable requirement for a peaceful, inclusive society. With regards to the provision of vocational skills and the TVET sector in general, we commend the increased efforts of the government that we have observed over the recent years. We believe, however, that it is important not only to focus on the higher TVET levels, also when it comes to budget allocation. In order not to leave out the young mothers and other youth who prematurely stopped or had to stop their educational pathways, Switzerland, through its Skills for Employment Tanzania, set an opportunity for youth employment, OIE, those two projects inter alia. Switzerland supports the Ministry of Education, Science and Technology to provide better flexible and also short-term non-formal vocational skills through its folks, folk development colleges. We would like to strongly encourage the governments to also increase their resource allocation to such practical, flexible, non-formal vocational trainings and related institutions. These are exactly the trainings and skills needed to equip a large share of the one million youth entering job market age every year so that they can access gainful self-employment. These projects were co-designed with the relevant Tanzanian authorities and will contribute to the 10-year national skills development strategy as well as to the draft second technical vocational education and training development plan. We look forward to being able to finally launch their implementation when all administrative hurdles are passed. Timely and transparent approvals are indeed of importance, and we very much hope that collaboration processes will be streamlined as much as possible. As we all know, the growing youth population in Tanzania might be a huge opportunity for accelerating growth and shared wealth. However, today, young Tanzanians are often stuck in low-paid, informal or non-paid work where they face limited prospects. Particularly, young women face negative gender norms and traditions that hamper their socioeconomic prospects. We encourage the authorities, as well as the civil society, to proactively entertain a public discussion on such gender norms and reflect on which issues might require debates in order to promote a peaceful, inclusive society allowing for sustainable development in the country. Simply put, let's make sure that the youth, all the youth, can learn what they will really need in order to make a good and meaningful living for them and their families. Second, innovation. Dear all, 
If one is to believe the Global Innovation Index, I represent here the world's most innovative country, Switzerland. Tanzania, on the other hand, has unfortunately been slipping down that same, that same index lately, being ranked 103rd out of 132 countries in 2022. The Tanzanian innovation ecosystem does have some strengths, however, such as a good level of loans for microfinance institutions in percentage of the GDP. But there are also significant weaknesses, such as the low level of domestic credits to SMEs and the sheer inexistence of venture capital. At the same time, another major weakness compared to other countries is the low level of females with advanced degrees being employed. We note that many efforts are already underway here in Zanzibar. The strong involvement of the private sector itself, particularly the financial service providers, as well as the international impact investment community, seems crucial. We believe the best contribu contribution a government can do for them is to support them with de-risking their work rather than replacing it with own government financing initiatives. And at the same time, again, the major driver of innovative solutions for an inclusive sustainable development is very simple. Advance gender equality, discuss it publicly, and make sure that women and girls enjoy the same rights as men and boys. This is most probably the most powerful driver for a peaceful, inclusive society enjoying sustainable development. In order to support these efforts, Switzerland will soon launch a so-called Innovation for social, social Change project, in which, together with international investors, financing will be allocated to gender-sensitive high-impact SMEs, thereby creating employment, gender equality, and overall social impact. Third, empowerment. Switzerland firmly believes that politically empowered citizens are a key ingredient for a peaceful, inclusive society. Our current 21-25 Swiss cooperation program for Tanzania therefore focuses on three key priorities, which all contribute towards an empowered citizenry. First, Switzerland provides support to allow institutions, state institutions, to be more efficient and effective Including, inclusive and increasingly free of corruption. Second, Switzerland supports initiatives that aim to, provo to promote civic space, which in turn shall enable all citizens, and especially young women, to influence local and national policy making and implementation and promote their human rights. Third, Switzerland supports in intervention like the ones described above, that focus on vocational training, which enables youth, especially poor young women, to benefit from gain, gainful income generating opportunities and sustainable livelihood. We fir firmly believe that an inclusive, sustainable development can only happen when institutions perform efficiently and effectively, when civic space is ensured and actively promoted, and when youth can benefit from gainful income generating opportunities and sustainable livelihood. Distinguished participants, these uh, few remarks must have sounded quite technical. My apologies. But edu education matters are serious and in a way technical matters. They are a key priority indeed for any society and any country and even more so for a country which with such a young, vibrant, and rapidly growing population like Tanzania. Mali himself knew it. And if we had to choose one single way only to do so, I say that assuring, assuring provision of quality education to all, boys and girls alike, would be a very valuable way indeed to honor his legacy of reconciliation, peace, democracy and harmony in Zanzibar and beyond. I wish you good discussions today and tomorrow, and I thank you for your attention.